back in November when Tracy had the lung infection, um, they had told us then that um, there was a 98% chance that he wouldn't come off of the operating table. And, um, and I looked at him, I said, well, let's just, I said, I have faith in God that everything's gonna work out. I said, but I just need to know some things. And I said, I said, we need to talk about it. And you know, when you're 50 years old, Tracy was 51, I'm 54, and uh, you don't expect to have to have that kind of conversation. And uh, I said, if something were to happen, I said, what are your wishes? And he said, first of all, he said, if another issue comes up in my life, he said, let me go home. He said, I'm tired of being sick. He said, I'm tired of living in a hospital. And he said, I just want to go home. And, um, and I looked at him and I said, well, that's easy for you to say. And he said, you will be fine. He said, you're tougher than what you think. And, um, and then he looked at me. He said, the only thing that I, that I really want, he said, if something were to happen, he said, is I want Jared to sing his song. He said, he'll never know. When I look at him on stage, he said, how proud that I am of him. Son, you've done him very well today. To say that the past five years um, has been a journey is an understatement. A lot of people want to paint me out to be a hero or, or Wonder Woman or Superwoman. Well, first of all, I ain't got the body for Wonder Woman. <laughs> I wished I did. <laughs> God ain't gonna let that happen because I would strut my stuff. <clears throat> Every morning I'd get Tracy ready. I'd come into the room, whether it be on the bus or at home, and I uh, always sung this song to him. And uh, I'd say, if I said you had a beautiful body, would you hold it against me? And he'd just look at me and I'd say, if I swore you were an angel, would you treat me like the devil tonight? Then he'd look at me. He said, if I could, I would. And um, <laughs> and trust me, he would have. <clears throat> Tracy, Tracy was probably the most romantic person on the face of this earth. I didn't deserve him at all. I didn't like him when we first met. We hated each other. Everybody on our bus could vouch for that. My grandmother died he came to the house after we got back home from the church, and he said, "Hey," he said, "He said, uh, let, let me let me take you, uh, let me take you to the mall." And I said, "I don't want to go to the mall." And he said, "But please," he said, "You just need to get out of the house." And I said, "No." I said, first of all, I'm not going anywhere with you." And uh, he's like, "Come on," he said, "You've had a tough week." He said, uh, "Oh hush," and um, trying to get my phone to pull up here, and. Um, so finally I gave in and we went to Gainesville to the mall and uh, he bought me two pair of sunglasses for $5 a piece and um, a white pair and a black pair. He said, that way, he said, you got something to go with everything. And uh, when the end of the day came and we went home and stuff, I went in the house and I was like, well, he ain't half bad, you know. And... Um, And then I woke up one morning and God said, this man's for you. I went back to sleep. <laughs> A 
because I know God don't make mistakes. And I knew I didn't hear him right, so I got back up and, and God said, this man's for you. November 28th, 1987, we took our vows for better, for worse, in sickness and in health. Yesterday, when I was getting him dressed, uh, my beautiful daughter-in-law, who is a rock, she's been a rock for our family, um, she was helping me get him dressed, and I was putting his wedding band on him. And I said, honey, 30 years ago, when I said, in sickness and in health, for better or for worse, I never thought that it would be like this. But I have been honored to be your wife, your caregiver, your advocate, your protector, your hands and your feet. And if I had to do it again, I'd do it all over again with him. Kyla Rowland, one of the greatest songwriters, posted on her Facebook post, Tracy was all about just wanting to see somebody saved. And when we talked about the funeral stuff back in November, he looked at me and he said, you tell whoever talks, he said, for them not to talk about me. He said, but I want the plan of salvation preached. And he said, I want to see souls saved. He said, even if I can't be there. Kyle Rowland wrote this on her Facebook today, this morning. She said, I suppose, she said, we all have to have say those words now. So long, sweet Tracy. Strange how memories flood our mind as we voice these words. My son Barry and Tracy, young, full of themselves, not a care. That's the way it was in the 80s in Morristown, Tennessee, when we met Tracy. The common thread that bound Barry and Tracy was their desire to sing Southern gospel and both determined to be the lowest bass singers to ever grace a stage. They weren't so interested in quality. It was all about hitting that lowest note. So cute, so innocent, full of fun and dreams. When God put Libby in Tracy's life, we were thrilled. No doubt Tracy would see his dream come true and have the perfect wife to sing beside of him. It was so easy to be around him. He was a natural wit, funny with no effort. Sunday morning at church, it seemed just another ordinary Sunday. The choir was singing, I'll take the old highway. And we began to feel that familiar touch, the one that makes you cry, raise your hand. You know how it feels. After they finished singing for the second time, I began to talk about Tracy. The Holy Spirit had been sweeter than honey. But he began to move in our hearts. So big we rejoiced and rejoiced couldn't seem to stay quiet. Then, a young man came to the altar and was gloriously born again. Needless to say, the only preaching done Sunday morning was rejoicing over another of God's children moving home. What a sure affirmation when a poor soul is saved through the testimony of your life, it is for sure you are with Jesus and still working for the cause of Christ. No one wants to say so long, Tracy, and surely I don't, but I can't end my goodbye with, I'll see you soon. At my age, there's no doubt, but it's not as though we will stop singing 
every choir can use a good alto and an outstanding bass singer. How beautiful to know you. You have a friend to face the most painful days of life, sisters and brothers who will continually surround you with prayers until the pain softens enough that you can endure it. I love you, Kyla. She explained Tracy. Already a soul has been saved through his life and the testimony of it. There was one other uh, gentleman, Don Elrod from Gainesville, Georgia. He said, a Christian's conquest of death is absolute. The result is final. He has vanquished the last enemy and has no more battles to fight. Tracy Stuffle fought hard, but he finished well. My daddy, when uh, Tracy come down to try out, Gerald Wolf is here uh, this afternoon. Gerald's one who brought Tracy down to try out with us. And, uh, you know, anybody who knows Gerald knows that every hair's got to be in place and, you know, your tie's got to be just right. And he made Tracy dress in a three-piece suit just to come down and try out. And uh, Gerald had a Toyota Corolla. And Tracy was like Jared. He was kind of a... a, a um, <clears throat> he was real healthy. <laughs> and uh, when he pulled up in the yard there at the house, we were looking out the window, and uh, it took him 20 minutes to unfold out of that little car. And... Uh, we looked at him, and we said, well, from the way he looks, he should be able to sing. So we took him to our little church up the road, and uh, we tried him out, and uh, we told him if, if we decided to hire a bass singer, we'd call him. We had no intentions of calling him. And um, he didn't do good. He, he was so nervous. And, uh, and we were talking, you know, me and Randy and... and um, we were like, man, he just, and daddy came up and he said, now let me tell you something. He said, now that kid right there is a diamond in the rough. He said, he just needs a little polishing. So Tracy called about two weeks later and he said, please, he said, Gerald had me all in a tears. That he had me dressed where I wasn't comfortable. And he said, let me come down one more time. And he said, I promise, he said, I'll do better. And when Daddy told us that he told him he could come down, we about died. And, uh, but this time, Tracy come down in his Toyota Celica. And he got out. He had cowboy boots on, blue jeans, a big old belt buckle bigger than his head, and a flannel shirt. And he came on business. And wasn't too long during the day that we sat and we shared what all we had been through, what he had been through. He had just lost his mom. We said, well, we'll take you out and we'll try you for a weekend and we'll see how it goes. 32 years later, Tracy never left. Tracy became that diamond and he sparkled. Even through all of the situation that he went through, he shined like none other. I'll leave you with this. Oh, I got to tell you one more thing. This flower arrangement over here has a telephone in it. The first time Tracy ever seen uh, a flower arrangement with a telephone in it uh, was at a funeral in Georgia when he fir after he first came down. And uh, now in Georgia, they put big ribbons on them. It says, Jesus called. Well, Tracy, we got on the bus, and after I forget whose funeral it was, and he said, I want to know something. He said, what idiot? 
looked at a flower arrangement and said, oh, it needs a telephone on it. <laughs> and then it needs a ribbon on it that said, Jesus called. <laughs> so when uh, we were ordering flowers from Jeff Sneed with the Sneed family, he done all these flowers. Tremendous job. Um, I told Lindsay, I said, tell him I need a flower arrangement with a telephone in it. <laughs> and on one of the leaves there, it has Jesus called. Jared looked at me and he said, Mom, he said, Dad's going to haunt us for sure <laughs> because we did that but it wouldn't be Tracy without a telephone. Romans 8.18, my favorite verse. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy. Do you hear it? They're not worthy to be compared to the joy that will be revealed in us. This is only temporary. And the way this world's looking, we're going to be with him a lot longer than we're going to be without him. That's what keeps us going. And I'm standing at the river that separates the two worlds that I love. Torn between my precious friends and my family and the place of peace that's waiting up above. Hold my hand and stay there by my side. Wait It's a comfort knowing he is not alone. And when 